to be educated. Last week, I went to Ciudad de Mexico, Mexico City, a place so large that the traffic is on the roads, underground, four stories deep, and in the sky in gondolas. I mean, there's an estimated 25 million people or angels who guided me around the city for four days, starting with a risk-taking hot dog. I found my seat at the CDMX arena for Brian Adams' So Happy It Hurts concert and had all the feels while we scream sang. Please forgive me, I know not what I do. Please forgive me, I can't stop running you. Did that sound like 10,000 people? From there, I got a ride to a storage container, studio, Airbnb, where I slept and woke up the next day for puffages, power lines, and the profound power of nature. I bought myself flowers, thought about renting an apartment to stay longer, and then got these chocolates. 85% dark and one that's infused with pineapple. This is Lindsay at the Natural Fiber Store where I treated myself to a clean shirt because I only brought with me the clothes I was wearing. I tried on fancy coats, looked at remarkable art, more nature for the win, galleries, galleries, art, art, nature, nature, nature. I wandered all the way downtown. Then I went to the Mayan Warrior event where I checked out the installations, ate all the fried food, and managed to leave before the climax so that I could sleep. And I slept in. Then more roaming and curiosity, this time exploring a less gentrified area called Salco, where I journaled for hours at a cafe before making my way to the Basta Chapultepec, which is twice the size of Central Park. On the weekends, there's seemingly endless carnival booths that are going around all the walkways, and I indulged myself in mangoes, a curly wig, and some research. I wondered how people from Mexico City, called Chilangos, perceived me. So I sought the help of a caricature artist, hoping that what stood out about me as different or notable would be emphasized in the drawing. Were they scared of my herpes scab? Did they think that my short hair was gender confusing? Were they concerned about my open-toed shoes and offended by my lack of bra? Maybe like me, they were influenced by cross-race effect or own race bias, basically the phenomenon where people from another racialized group are typically harder to recognize than people from one's own. As and maybe I was just another white woman and they didn't take any notice of me beyond that. After the first drawing, I asked three other caricature artists to do the same because I'm a scientist and I love data. The results don't prove a hypothesis. There are too many limitations. They do illustrate a lesson that relates to sexuality. Some of us worry about how our sexualities, our orientation, situationships, open monogamous, long-term, single, are perceived. Do they like me? Do I care? What do they think? Is it accurate? Then some of us investigate. We're willing to go into the possibility that there are misunderstandings, assumptions, unrealistic expectations, disappointment. All of the caricatures include my doe-eyed face, short hairs, ears, neck, and shoulders. I look like a human. They don't include the red scab above my lip and in three of them, my freckles and sunglasses. The artist gave me curvy legs and these breasts. They quaffed my hair, replaced my flip-flops with metropolitan friendly shoes and posed me less slouched and more David saw. I think this is similar to what we do with our sex lives. There's some accuracy. There's also a tendency to project onto others, especially those we're trying to flatter, those characteristics which we deem socially or sexually desirable, even if they're not true. Like wanting to have genital sex regularly, enjoying touch and reciprocation, a hard dick, a wet ass pussy, a shapely buttocks, and managed pubes. But what if those things aren't real? What if I don't like penetrative sex? What if my dick is happier when it's flaccid? What if my pubes wanna grow like rebellious vines? What if we think that it's kind to align people to the values society has for the best sexuality, but it's not real? It's not who I am or what I even want. What if the caricatures that we draw of one another's sex lives are meant to be celebratory, but they are actually this distorted view that causes chaos within each other's negotiation of sexuality? What if I'm proud of my immune system working to heal my body and my extra small breasts? What if we're proud of our sexualities just the way they are? Can we accept the drawing? and continue to collect other depictions of ourselves and others? Can we continue to draw with more detail and color? Can we value the sexual characteristics that we have and not just the ones that we're prone to assign? Can we stay curious? 
Please stay curious. This episode of Sexplanations is sponsored by Nebula, an independent streaming platform that supports and produces many of your favorite creators and educators like Minute Physics, Brody Deschanel, Rare Earth, and Cat Black. Abigail Thorne from Philosophy Tube has just started filming a Nebula original movie called Dracula's Sex Girlfriend about a bond between two women who have dated Dracula in their past. And because she's partnering with Nebula, they have already funded the movie before it's been released. Nebula has an equitable relationship with those of us entrusted to share content there. Nebula compensates us with a portion of your subscription. In addition to giving us a safe space to put our content, we get to upload it without fear of censorship or discrimination. Anyway, I'm on Nebula. Abigail is on Nebula. And if you're looking for another reason to sign up, you can watch Abigail's The Prince on there right now, which is so cool. It's a Shakespearean drama that is mind bending and gender bending and something that I believe you have the curiosity to find your way through. You're going to love the acting, the writing, the originality. It's a Shakespearean, a sex Shakespearean. It's sex. It's a Shakespearean drama. <laughs> Please sign up using the link in the description, nebula.tv slash explanations to get yourself 40% off a subscription, which is around $3 a month. That link supports me, sex education, and other creators on the platform. It also says, hey, we're really glad that you're working with Nebula and maybe I'll make a movie with them in the future. Stay curious, right? Closed-toed shoes? Closed-toed shoes? But I'm so frustrated Hello to my love